Hey, Doc Newsom here. I wanted to tell you about um, why the liver is so pivotal in hormone balance. It's kind of interesting. I have a lot of people, uh, even other doctors that do a lot of bioidentical hormone therapy and whatnot, uh, would, uh, in, in discussion, we I always ask them, why don't you... Uh, why don't you clean the liver before giving people hormones? And uh, they're like, well, why would that have anything to do with it? The liver doesn't produce any hormones. Um, the thing about it is the liver is where the hormones are processed. Let's take the thyroid, for instance, okay? The hypothalamus in the brain governs your emotions, it senses your emotions, it has, it's where all your sensations and feelings are, are processed and where you actually feel your emotions. Um, hypothalamus also monitors the blood levels of all your different hormones. Okay, and so if, let's say, the thyroid hormones start to drop, the hypothalamus tells the pituitary gland, which is right below it, hey, we need, uh, need more thyroid hormones. Pituitary gland produces a hormone called TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. And that TSH goes down to the thyroid. It tells the, the thyroid, hey, you need more hormones. And so, thyroid produces those hormones. Only a small amount of what the thyroid produces itself is active, okay? It can actually go out and, and work in the cells, okay? The other, about 80% of what the thyroid produces is actually the, the, the molecule, the hormone, is too large to actually function in the cells. And it's called T4. And T4 gets sent off to the liver where it gets processed. And one of the iodine ions gets split off of it. And that becomes T3. And T3 then goes out into all the rest of your cells and it activates the mitochondria in your cells. So the mitochondria goes through the Krebs cycle and produces energy. And your cell then has energy to work with, okay? Um, the thing with all that is that there was a cascade of events, you know, a sequence of events that had to happen so that the, th the hormone was produced. But even though the, th the hormone was produced, it had to be activated or metabolized or utilized or um, processed, okay, in the liver. So, in, the, in this process, we got some other things that are real interesting. You know, so we got our thyroid hormones are, are processed in the liver, our reproductive hormones are processed in the liver, we got uh, our uh, our non-stress related adrenal hormones are processed in the liver. Our stress related epinephrine, norepinephrine, and cortisol, okay, your adrenaline and your cortisone uh, hormones that are produced by the adrenal glands are processed in the liver after they've had their function, okay? So after they've, you know, if you've had a stressful event or a fight or flight response um, and you have that dump of adrenaline into your system and you're ready to go, okay, and then afterwards you get a dump of cortisol to reduce all the swelling and inflammation that may have happened due to your your, uh, your stressful event or your fight or flight response. You know, if you had, you actually had to have a fight and you got banged up, there's a, uh, uh, a dump of cortisol that happens after that fight or flight response. And uh, so initially you have your adrenaline, then you have your cortisol. Well, those get dumped into the bloodstream straight away. They don't have to go to the liver to get processed. Once they've been metabolized, they go back to the liver to get broke down. Okay? And that can actually uh, disrupt some of your insulin metabolism, which takes us to the pancreas. The pancreas also produces glucagon and insulin, which go straight into the bloodstream and have their function. Um, but once they've been metabolized, they go back to the liver to be processed and, and uh, you know, uh, broken down. Bottom line, liver is where 
all our hormones are, are processed, okay? They have to go through the liver before they can go out and have their function on the rest of the cells in the body. Interesting thing about the liver and the brain, okay, that hypothalamus I just talked about a little bit ago, that portion of the brain where you feel all your emotions, okay, it is, it, hypothalamus is like half brain, half endocrine, okay, so it's half uh, nervous tissue and half hormone producing tissue, okay, and it's all kind of interwoven into one, one uh, matrix there. And that hypothalamus is, again, it's where we feel all, all of our emotions. Interesting thing is the hypothalamus and the liver are connected via the vagus nerve. Okay, the vagus nerve is one of your brain stem uh, cranial nerves. Okay, it, it attaches to the brain stem and it goes up into the brain and attaches to the, it, it connects with that hypothalamus where you feel all your emotions and it goes down and innervates and is connected to your liver. Okay, here's an interesting thing. Your hypothalamus is where you feel your emotions, and through your emotions, your emotions will have a dramatic effect on your hormones. Hypothalamus, okay, we got hypothalamus, we got pituitary, and we have gland, okay, the, the gland that produces your hormones, whatever gland it is. So, hypothalamus feels something, pituitary responds to that feeling, and then activates the gland that uh, produces that whatever hormone. And then that hormone gets taken to the liver, and the liver processes it and then sends it out to all your tissues. Okay, so our hypothalamus feels our emotions, and our liver responds to our chemistry, which is very interesting. Because they are connected via the vagus nerve, if the chemistry of the body is off, okay, you got bad chemistry, too toxic, not enough nutrients, too much stress, not enough activity, so on and so forth, or maybe too much activity and not enough, you know, rehab, or not enough uh, rest, okay? When our chemistry gets off, our liver <laughs> sends messages back up to the hypothalamus, okay? So the faulty chemistry then starts to affect our emotions, and our emotions uh, and our chemistry uh, work hand in hand. Okay, so in our hypothalamus, we feel all our emotions, but in our liver, <clears throat> we process all our chemistry. And those two are connected via the vagus nerve. So when the vagus nerve carries the, uh, the message that our chemistry is off up to the, the emotional center, the hypothalamus, our emotions start to get off. Ugh, not good. And if our emotions are off, Okay, we're having a rough time. That sends messages through the vagus nerve down to the liver, which can throw our chemistry off. Okay, so my point in this video today is to inform you that by focusing on the liver first before we go out trying to fix any other hormones, by focusing on the liver first, correcting the liver, cleansing the liver, getting the chemistry right in the liver first, we start to reset that hypothalamus, and the hypothalamus then f trickles down to the rest. You know, the, the, the reset of the hypothalamus, you know, works then on the pituitary gland and then on all the rest of the glands in the body. So, to recap, hypothalamus and liver are connected via the vagus nerve. The hypothalamus responds to our emotions and therefore affects our hormones or our emotions. The liver, on the other hand, processes our, emotion, our hormones. And as our, if our liver chemistry is right, our hormones get processed correctly and we feel good, okay? Because our hormones are being processed correctly, our chemistry is right. If our chemistry is right, our emotions are, are more stable. If our emotions are more stable, it also affects our chemistry. So thank you very much. I appreciate you tuning in.